Welcome to Module 3 in this series of courses on the fundamentals of telecommunications. Today we'll be talking about the evolution of telecommunications technology and policy, specifically as they relate to the public switch telephone network, or the PSTN. Once again, I'm Ted Chandler, your instructor for this online course. In this module on the evolution of telecommunications technology and policy, you will learn to first describe the growth of telecommunications technology since the late 19th century, identify key inventions and their current equivalents in the telephone technology, explain the impetus for and impact of AT&T's divestiture, discuss how government has influenced the way in which consumers obtain telecommunications services, and finally, you'll be able to list current policy trends that affect the telecommunications industry. Now let's go back to 1837 when Samuel Morse invented the telegraph, which consisted of an electromagnet and a hand-operated switch known as a key that alternately opened and closed an electrical circuit over a wire. What he transmitted was a series of short and long pulses, or dots and dashes, that represented characters. This became known as Morse code. Then in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell filed his very valuable patent for the telephone, which is presented on the left side of this slide. In 1880, Bell founded his own company, American Bell, which produced both telephones and supplied telephone services to houses and businesses. Note a turn-of-the-century wall-mounted telephone on the right. To connect multiple subscribers, Bell devised the telephone exchange, where subscriber lines terminated and operators connected the circuits to complete a call. Each phone line had a jack for its connection, and the operators had flexible circuit cords with plugs at their ends, which the operator inserted into the appropriate jacks to complete the connection. The next significant advance in telephone technology was the adoption of the first automatic switch, called a step-by-step -step switch, which was developed by Allman Stoger in 1889. In 1913, N.J. Reynolds, a Western electric engineer, developed a better automatic switch, the crossbar switch, which is an example of what's known as a space division switch. A space division switch manipulates the physical space between two lines, thereby closing a circuit to connect a call. As crossbar technology improved through the 20th century, the number of connections such a switch could complete also increased dramatically with the use of magnetic reeds inside of glass tubes. These were developed by Bell Labs. In the 1970s, a single crossbar switch could handle up to 65,000 two-way calls. Then in 1976, a new type of switch was placed into service called the space division switch. Space division switching is a transmission technique in which samples from the multiple incoming lines are digitized. Then each sample is issued to the same circuit in a predetermined sequence before finally being transmitted to the correct outboard line. Now let's take a look at the evolution of wireless telecommunications. In 1896, Marconi applied for a patent for a device that transmitted electromagnetic waves into the air, which he called a radio. By 1901, people were using his device to transmit wireless signals across the Atlantic Ocean. The development of wireless technology was marked by, first, the early vacuum tube which was a sealed container made of glass, metal, or ceramic that contains, in a vacuum, a charge plate that transmits current to a filament. Then came the audion, 
which was patented in 1907 by Lee DeFrost and is a type of vacuum tube that contains an additional electrode in the middle of the positive and ne uh, negative electrodes. Then amplitude and frequency modulation were developed in, w in which one communication wave containing the information to be transmitted is combined with another wave called a carrier wave whose amplitude or frequency is maintained constant. We will explore AM and FM transmission much more in Module 6 of this course. In 1946, AT&T Bell Laboratories connected the first wireless car phone to the St. Louis phone network. AT&T called its system the Improved Mobile Telephone Service, or IMTS. IMTS used cells or areas served by low power transmitters which are the basis for modern cell uh, phone technology. In the late 1950s and early 1960s we saw the first satellite communications. In satellite, satellite communications geosynchronous orbits means that the satellites orbit the earth at the same rate as the earth turns so they remain in the same place relative to the Earth and often at the Earth's equator. An uplink is a broadcast from an Earth-based transmitter to an orbiting satellite. At the satellite, a transponder receives the uplink, then transmits the signals to another Earth-based location in a downlink. Computers also played a key role in the evolution of telecommunications. During World War II, the U.S. Army worked uh, with the University of Pennsylvania to develop the Electronic Numerical Integrator Computer, or ENIAC, a multi-purpose computer so large that it required its own 30 by 50 foot room. The first computer designed for business and not merely scientific purposes, the Universal Automatic Computer, or UNIVAC, became available in 1951. It weighed 16,000 pounds and performed approximately 1,000 calculations per second. A small handheld calculator of today has more power than the original Unila, uh, Univac. By 1965, many large businesses used computers for financial calculations. To understand the history of telecommunications in the United States, you must understand the history of AT&T and the government policy involvement specifically regarding AT&T. As we discussed, AT&T grew out of Alexander Graham Bell's company, American Bell, which quickly bought other small telephone companies. Please take a moment and review this slide. By the turn of the 20th century, AT&T supplied service to 60% of U.S. telephone subscribers. In 